This is the Marvel Legends series, X-Men, Mr. Sinister. The figure is part of the Wendigo Build-A-Figure series from the Marvel Legends line. Here's a look at the packaging. I picked up this figure at Hobby Corner. And this figure did not come with the Build-A-Figure piece. It should have come with the right arm of Wendigo. The store was actually selling the Wendigo Build-A-Figure separately you could purchase it on its own if you did not like to purchase any of the figures but you just wanted the builder figure they were selling it separately so each of these figures contains a, a part or a piece that will build the wind and here is mr sinister out of packaging now i am not the biggest mr sinister fan in the comic books the, it's, she's just a villain that the X-Men just seem to uh, to not be able to put away. Like this big old cockroach that keeps messing with the lives of Jean and Cyclops and the rest of the X-Men and the mutants. And he's just so annoying. The mad geneticist whose ability to clone himself and any other person or living thing on Earth just renders him almost immortal. He is immortalized in this fantastic Marvel Legends figure. I, I could not resist it. Despite not liking the character, this figure is absolutely a wonderful figure. Perhaps one of the best Marvel Legends figures that Hasbro's ever come up with. Definitely better than that Toy Biz version. Um, I'm so glad I've gotten rid of that figure and have this one in his lieu. I love it. Uh, let's talk about some of the details of the figure. He, this is the detail that immediately greets you when you take it out of packaging. He's got these sort of, you know, I, I thought this was stupid in the comic books. He's got a cape, but it's like shredded. Like it went through the shredder and they've, they've done it. I was wondering how Hasbro was going to do this, if they were going to do it individually. But it seems like it's just molded in two pieces. And they've, some of the pieces are just molded, they stuck together. That's an easy way for assembling the figure and manufacturing the figure, I suppose. The lower part, I think, is just super glued to the bigger part. Uh, and then the bigger part has, I think, a, a wide peg that's been glued onto the back of Mr. Sinister. Uh, so you don't want to tug on that too sharply, otherwise you're going to risk uh, breaking it off. Now, he's got this Dracula collar which I think should have been molded so that it folds out this way. This is how he looked like in the comic books. Like a vampire, exactly. Like a 17th century Victorian vampire. Anyway, something like that. I don't know. But uh, because of the molding, it, it's propped up a little bit too high. But that's not a problem. Uh, nothing a uh, uh, boiling water and ice cold water trick will not be able to handle. But it should be this way. Okay, so he's very, the, the paint that they used on the head sculpt is, wow, it's very bright. Bright white, bone white. And they painted it black, and it's got some red highlights for the eyes, and that diamond, silly looking diamond on his forehead. He's got some black lipstick and a black chin, uh, highlights on the chin. His teeth are nicely sculpted and painted as well. So great, great sculpt. Uh, did a wonderful job in the rendition of the cape. And as for the rest of the, the figure's body, you get to see some molded pieces right here um, on his uh, shoulder pads. I thought they were going to be, I thought they were going to be very hard. They're not, they're made of these, this very soft PVC material, which will not hinder uh, articulation of the shoulders. He's got a molded in belt. Uh, no, not molded it. It's a separate piece. My bad. And they slipped it on during assembly, I think. You can't remove it unless you pop off the torso. He's got these dominatrix high boots that, you know, for some reason looks good on him. And soft PVC material right there. He's got some detail on the boots, on the glove. And it has this overall blue steel colossus look on his torso, which I think came out very, very nicely. It's got a mix of that blackish midnight blue metallic vibe to it. I really, really like it. I'm enjoying this figure a lot. Now, articulation for the figure. Um, it's got a ball jointed neck that is on a hinge. It can go this way, that way. Uh, 
can tilt it a little bit. Yep. He's got this ratcheting ab crunch, a waist swivel, ball hinge shoulders, which I've already shown you partially a while ago, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, ball hinge wrists that go in and out. Uh, the other hand is an open claw and an uh, X-Men. I've come to destroy you. No, I'm kidding. Okay, and then he's got ball jointed hips. Like that, like that. Thigh swivel at the cut of the boot. Double jointed knees. Pretty nice. He doesn't have a calf swivel, but he has this sort of ankle swivel, which really helps in posability. Hinge ankle goes up and down, and the rocker pivot. And for size comparisons, here he is with the Jim Lee Cyclops and the Build-A-Figure Apocalypse. Now, the figure stands head to toe, roughly just under 7 inches tall. And he's actually a pretty good big figure. I thought he'd, be a, he'd, he'd fit as a BAF. So, some final thoughts on the figure. Need I say more? This is an absolutely wonderful figure, even if you're not a big fan of the villain. If you're a big Marvel Legends collector, especially the X-Men figures, this is an absolute must-have. Uh, best of luck to everybody hunting him down. He comes one per case. So every single Marvel Legends X-Men collector will probably be gunning for this wave. This is the figure to get in this particular wave. Now, if you're here in Manila and, you know, you want to get this figure... The best way to do so, I think, is to just talk to the hobby shops and place your pre-orders for the entire wave. And, I mean, the entire wave is pretty good. You're going to get it. But if you just want the figure, I think it will be very difficult to just hunt him down on retail. You know, because lately here in Manila, we haven't gotten a lot of stuff on retail for some reason. I've been getting myself through hobby shops. And um, you can probably order this at a hobby shop. If you order it on its own, it'll probably be very expensive. You'll, you'll end up paying $40, $50 for it. Uh, but if you get the entire set, he's going to come down to, at most, about $30, $32. Uh, yeah, Hasbro products are very expensive here in Manila. But uh, nevertheless, best of luck to everybody hunting him down. He's a great figure. The figure is going to get a 10 out of 10. Now, if you're wondering, if you want some tips on the paint apps and trying to pick from the shelf, man, if you can pick through several on the shelves on the pegs, you're a very lucky toy hunter. But usually you'll just find one, take it. Um, I've seen very, very little paint blemishes on the figure. And the things you have to look out for, you know, this is nitpicking, is you go through the head, make sure the white and the black don't bleed in as well as the red. And on the chest, that red doesn't bleed in too much with the uh, the blue metallic paint. As you can see on mine, you can see a little bit of splotch of red on his chest right above that diamond. There's a little bit of that. But other than that, the paint apps are actually spot on in this figure. Great sculpt overall, just a fantastic figure. Well done, Hasbro. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video review. This has been the Marvel Legends series, the X-Men from the Wendigo Build-A-Figure Wave, Mr. Sinister. Thanks for watching.